Addiction is something extremely prevalent in today's society, so much so that some addictions aren't even seen as that, and instead are just daily tasks you do without even thinking about it. These addictions add up and years down the line, you spent the cost of a luxury car on buying a drink every day. What if you were addicted to something a little bit more extreme and harmful, like gambling? You can blow hundreds of dollars in seconds simply because a cube landed on a different side than you were hoping, or you had a near miss on an electronic gambling machine. These addictions don't stop when you leave the casino either. With the recent surge in popularity of online gambling, you can bet real money right from your phone. But what's the harm in gambling on RuneScape, when all you're spending is pixels that really don't even exist? The problem is, whether you like it or not, these pixels do carry real world value and some people have lost enough of these pixels to lose as much as their house in real life. These are the stories of staking addicts and how virtual currency destroyed their lives. Before I get to interviewing some of the addicts, I'm going to talk about my experience. My first experience in the duel arena wasn't necessarily a good one. I teleported in, lost 3 or 4 stakes in a row, and ended up leaving about 5 million GP down. I went back with another 5 and lost all of that as well. By the time I finally left the arena, I had lost around 14 mil and 10 or so stakes. I was unlucky, well others were. One of those unlucky people at first was Adam. The first time I went staking, I sold most of the items in my bank which totaled close to around 250 mil. I lost the majority of it the first time. I told my friends what I did with my cash. They encouraged me to go back, and I turned the remaining 94 mil into a twisted bow. This is both the beauty and issue of staking. You have the ability to turn nothing into something and something into nothing. Adam got unlucky at first, but made profit beyond his wildest dreams the next time around. Adam's story is very similar to thousands of others who enter the duel arena every day. These people are RuneScape's multi-billionaires. Right now on the black market, old school RuneScape gold goes for about 70, 80, maybe 90 cents per million GP. At the time of recording this video, twisted bows were worth around 1.23 billion GP. So that would mean a twisted bow was worth somewhere around $1,100, a little bit less, a little bit more depending on who's supplying the gold. I do want to take the time to note that you should never actually buy gold from these underground markets. I don't want to seem like I'm endorsing these places. If you really need gold in game, simply just buy a bond, because it makes sure your account is going to be 100% safe and you're not really supporting things like botting or account stealing. Buying gold from these underground markets is a really easy way to earn yourself a ban and you lose out on potentially thousands of real life dollars with nothing in return. So simply put, just don't buy from them. The only reason I even discuss them in this video is because they're important to the story itself. Regardless of how much Jagex tries to stop it, gold does hold real world value. Most of the big winners sell the gold right back to the people that lost it, and the cycle continues. Now you see, that's where the problem lies. When people get addicted to staking, most of them can't stop whether it's win or lose. So what happens when the luck actually runs out? What happens when your bank value hits zero? The point where I hit rock bottom was when I had a 6 bill bank and was ready to call it quits from staking for good. A friend in this group, who I trusted, started getting into the real world trading aspect of staking and staked a Tebow I had at the time in order to profit from it in real life. I ended up trying to stake to cover the loss. To me, money wasn't a big issue as I have a very well-paying job and I didn't think much of it. Over the course of trying to win myself back into that position I was in, I probably sunk $14,000 over time. Adam's story is a familiar one for many staking addicts. Just type in staking addiction on Reddit and see what happens. $2,000, $10,000, even up to $50,000 spent on this game just to lose it all. Their addiction is fueled regardless of what their in-game cash stack looks like. It doesn't really even stop there though. These people have even come up with theories like, since there's technically an infinite amount of GP in RS, as there's no government to regulate the amount that comes into the game, wouldn't staking your bank as many times as possible be a smart idea, as you can turn one GP into an infinite amount? The thing is that I don't even know if this is a troll post or not, because 
the same user actually responds to the people criticizing him. Some of these people do have a legitimate addiction and need professional help for it. This is because some of it can leak into their personal life, and before they know it, they've lost their car because of a medieval fantasy video game. I ended up losing it all and quitting my main account in around September of 2017. I had hit a point where the thought of getting that winning feeling was not worth the amount of money I was paying to fund the addiction, and I'd completely disconnected with the friends I'd made in the game. Since then, I've quit staking big amounts at the Duel Arena, and only go there if I get roped in by people I know just to have a bit of fun and chuck small amounts. But in the back of my mind, I know I really just want to chuck it all and get that big win and push that limit. Staking addicts have gone as far as tweeting developers, asking if items like the Twisted Bone Scythe could become untradeable, so it's impossible for them to sell it for more staking money. Some stakers are so addicted that they sense something like that and don't even realize what they're saying. The problem with the whole thing is it's not even recognized as a real form of gambling. Just listen in on a conversation of people staking and see how they try to rationalize it all. Oh, I lost because the right song wasn't playing. Oh, I lost because I didn't do an emote before the stake started, and so on. Recently, with the rise in popularity of online gambling, there is lots of money to be made. However, not everyone follows the rules, and recent crackdowns have led to online casino owners surrendering millions of dollars or even going to jail. More than 260 people were arrested during a police crackdown on an illegal online gambling syndicate. We have exclusive new details on an investigation tied to offshore gambling websites. The Missouri legislator thinks the state is losing out on tens of millions of dollars in revenue. If you think about it, RuneScape is not only the greatest chance of winning with the odds being near 50-50, it's not even regulated, as it's not considered an online casino. Jagex takes a 1% cut of your winnings, and that's it. You guys are asking for the tax numbers for the Duel Arena, so we have that as our first question, actually. Uh, it's how much money has actually been removed from the Duel Arena via tax so far. And the answer? Uh, by this lovely golden gnome we have. <laughs> yes. Uh, we got it from Mod Lottie. Thank you very much. At Jagex Lottie. Check her out. We have removed 127 billion coins from the economy with tax alone. So, there you go. However, the main risk is that any time your account can be banned for real world trading. You then have to spend months rebuilding your stats and getting gold required to stake. This year alone, we have removed over 3.7 trillion GP from their bank and also banned over 1.1 million gold farming member accounts. However, despite these significant blows, gold farming continues to survive and undermine the economy and harm the community. We still see 150 to 170 billion GP inject into the game each and every day. You also have to worry about getting scammed as it's not uncommon for you to maybe miss something if you're staking late at night. And before you know it, you've lost 200 mil because the person you staked brought an AGS. I know, I'm two times in him. I think he just no fooded me. He just no fooded me. <laughs> this video has probably already proven to you why you shouldn't stake, and if you do, why you shouldn't buy or sell any real world gold. Because not only will it get your account banned, the chances of you losing it all very soon are very high. Even though the odds are 50 50, chances are they're not going to be in your favor and you might just lose all your money a couple stakes in a row and never win it back. I just want to close this all out by saying, if you have a gambling addiction, please do seek help. These stories have hopefully convinced you that throwing away that 10 mil cash stack may cost you a lot more in the long run. Thank you.